Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and today I will be filming a Cambodian food mukbang. Today I have a salami chukrung or in English it's called hot and sour soup. This is my Asian style chicken wings that I air fried. Bok lahong, some napa cabbage to cut out the flavors in the papaya salad, some rice and some yellow pickled radish. Let's get into it. Um, so I put some dried Thai chili peppers in my salami chukurung because I like a lot of spice. And my salami chukurung, I made it this time. Um, I've never made it up until like a couple days ago and honestly was very impressed that I was able to make it. For some reason I thought it was really hard to make but it was really easy. I'm just going to mix that up. Alright and there you go. It's got... Um, beef tripe, cut up, I think it's like an oven roast, and some jalapenos, celery, watercress, I think it's watercress or morning glory, I always get those mixed up, and I think that's pretty much it, and obviously glue, and uh, I put like two tablespoons of uh, bahok too. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a first bite. I like to do it like this, I like to soap a little bit just like learned how to make salami chukrung by watching my family members and also going on youtube and watching other people cook it because this is literally my favorite cambodian food i could eat this every single day i'm not even kidding you um and this is like the most authentic cambodian food as well i guess that's what we're known for And I've got my iced coffee, coffee, excuse me, that I made. Yeah, so I will be filming a tutorial on how do I make my salma chukru. It was very simple. It wasn't that time consuming. I think tops, it's like an hour with, you know, everything. Anyway, I think I'm going to go ahead and take a bite out of the bakla hung. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to take a bite out of my chicken wings. I try to make it as good as my grandma, but I don't know. So this is what it looks like. I'm just gonna go ahead and take a bite. Mmm, it's good. So then I go ahead and take a bite of my bubble hung. Mm. So good. So good. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy to like be cooking more Cambodian dishes because <clears throat> if you're not familiar, I actually love to cook and it's literally one of my first passions. Like, my mom always told me growing up that if you want to, you know, learn how to make Cambodian food, you have to watch other people when you go to like someone else's house. And that's always stayed with me ever since. I think that's why I have like the palate to be able to tell you what, like what a Cambodian dish is lacking. My family likes to put a lot of flavor. A lot of people out there that make Cambodian dishes and it lacks so much flavor. It's just very bland. And I'm not going for that. I'm going for like that one bite and you're like, damn, that's so good. I'm sorry, I eat my chicken wings really weird. I don't normally just like bite into it. I pick it apart for some reason. I don't know. I think like as a kid, I just was like disgusted by like eating it like that. So that's a habit. Mm. Anyway, my buckle hung is really good. I've been making buckle hung since I was maybe like 15, I think. And I'm not 15 anymore, as you can tell. I put like... For my mokko hong, I put the beet, the bahok, um fish sauce thing, and then I put fish sauce, sugar, peppers, um, lime, lots of lime. Um, I think you can also use, I've seen people use tamarind powder or like tamarind, just fresh tamarind, but I didn't have any uh, fresh tamarind, so I didn't do that. 
but it's pretty good it's very stinky and then also there's like this spicy papaya salad dressing that you can get at the asian market usually it's sold at the like southeast asian markets but not the chinese market so i had to go to the cambodian store oh my god everything is very good so far i'm gonna take another bite out of my salmaju grung so i know that like i had mentioned that i wanted my channel to be based on like the mental health of Khmer people but you know that's like a really like, difficult thing to talk about because i'm still trying to like have that conversation with my family and it's very hard for them to like open up about it so once i feel more comfortable in that aspect of my life i'll go ahead and film more stuff like that but for now let's stick with the mukbangs and the vlogs and the tutorials and stuff you know mm. Anyway. I'll take a bite of my Napa cabbage. You guys wanna see a close up of my Salama Jukuru? I um I actually was so proud of my Samachu Grung that like I time with my mom and I said, look at what I made for the first time ever. And she's like, wow, it looks pretty good. Anyway, I think I want to do more Cambodian mukbangs because there are not any videos out there that I've seen where people are eating like authentic <clears throat> Cambodian food. I think a lot of the videos that are out there are probably people in Cambodia and I I like those videos but I think that like because I don't really understand Khmer that much. I know like a, a lot but not as much as someone who's from Cambodia, you know what I mean? By the way guys, air fryer is a game changer. I highly recommend everyone get one. It is so amazing easy cleanup you don't have to worry about turning on the stove top too high and stuff like that it's like perfect honestly it was probably the best purchase ever so anyway i'm gonna go ahead and bite this because i'll show you the the wing Let's see i take a bite of my yellow, yellow pickle radish sometimes you want a little crunch in your food you know I wanted to let you guys know, I love home goods, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, like that is my shit. Like, seriously. I went to Home Goods yesterday and Home Goods is right next to TJ Maxx. And usually I go to TJ Maxx before I go to Home Goods, but for some reason I was like, I go to Home Goods to get like a cutting board. I get to Home Goods. As I enter, there's a display of like the coffee syrups and stuff. So I look and I see that there are some for clearance for $4. I was like, oh, it's $4, let me just grab one. And um, I check out, I got a cutting board. I got like this bamboo cutting board that had like three different sizes and it was perfect. It was like only $10. So if you ever wanna get like home stuff, go to HomeSense, HomeGoods, TJ Maxx, Marshalls. They always have stuff that is for like a decent price. I go to TJ Maxx and I'm looking through TJ Maxx and I hit up the kitchen where there's snacks, gourmet foods and stuff like that. So I'm over there and I see coffee syrups at the end cap. And I'm looking at the price of the exact same product that I got at Home Goods, And it's in like a clearance section. I'm like, oh, it has to be $4. So I look and it was a dollar and there was five of them. And I look, because my boyfriend was with me, I was like, oh my God, I really want to get this, but I just spent $4 on just one at Home Goods." And he was just like, well, you can go ahead and Home Goods and return it. And I'm like, I'm not gonna go return it. Like, that's so stupid. And also it's like unclear. And so it's probably not returnable. So I didn't even bother returning anything at Home Goods. So it's fine, I'm, I'm fine. Next time I think I should just go ahead and go to TJ Maxx first. Usually I go to TJ Maxx first, so I was kind of like, ah, that always happens. I know, first world problems. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue eating. 
that um, muggle hung tastes better when it's been sitting in the soft for a few days. I don't know, today this tastes like so much better than when I first made it. I think I'm gonna need more rice yeah. because I'm running out. I'm sorry if you guys can hear the train, the commuter rail is like passing through. I'm just gonna eat more buffalo hung. I'm gonna have another wing. This is keto friendly guys. Anyway. All right, I'll try to eat it the way people are supposed to eat it. Anyway, should I do like a mukbang where I just speak Khmer throughout the whole time? Obviously, I'm going to speak Khmer English because I don't know every single word in Khmer. But people tell me when I, uh, I'm on my Instagram, and if you guys do not follow me on Instagram, I'll go ahead and leave my handle below. But <clears throat> anyway, people on my Instagram, I'll do sometimes I'll do stories where I'm speaking Khmer, and people will be like, oh my gosh, your Khmer is so much better than mine. Like, I can't speak it. You speak so, like, beautiful. Like, you don't even have an accent or anything. And I'm like, oh my God, thank you. When I was growing up, my mom taught us Khmer first before English, because obviously she only spoke Khmer like fluently. She said, if you're gonna learn English, you're gonna learn it at school. So that's what happened. But anyway, um, she always spoke Khmer to me like throughout my life. So that way I would be able to speak it. I can speak it fluently. My older brother can speak it fluently. Excuse me, my younger sister, she understands it, but she, can't really speak my that uh, fluently. It's very, um, very English. Like, it's funny. I don't know. And then, um, I don't know. I just think I'm very proud to be Khmer. Like, as I've gotten older, I've just embraced that I'm a brown girl. You know, um, I'm Cambodian, and I love my culture. I love my people. You know, we should be trying to come together versus dividing each other. Also, another thing is, like, if you think about it, the Khmer people that came here as refugees, they went through so much fucking shit, dude. Like, you know, there were people that lost their mom, their dad, their brothers, their whole family. There are people that were raped, that were tormented. It just, like, all these terrible things happened to them, and then they had to come to a country where they didn't know a lick of the language. They were the minority. Coming to a country where you didn't know the lick of the language, you didn't know the culture, and then you had to readapt. Even though you were so young, you didn't even know what was going on in your own country, but you knew that it wasn't good. Like, just think about that. A lot of people in the Cam Cambodian community, and I don't care if, you know, you want to dispute this, um, because it's literally, there are studies on it. There are people that have their PhDs that do studies on this within the Cambodian community that are saying that they're seeing a pattern with having some sort of post-traumatic stress disorder, depression, and anxiety. I just really dislike the fact that there are so many people out there, people still are not convinced that mental health is a real thing. Mental illness is a real thing. It definitely is. You know, people don't go to school for a million years to like be told by someone who probably hasn't even graduated high school. Just tell them that, no, you're wrong. You know, you need if you're going to have an argument with someone, you need to be able to have the facts to prove it. You can't just say, well, I have a feeling. You need to show other people why they should care about your argument and why it may be true. Do you know what I mean? Um, I think that this is all I'm gonna do because I'm full already. With that, I'm going to send you off. Bye guys.